Today we issued an avalanche watch. We are expecting natural avalanche activity to become large and widespread tomorrow if the weather forecast materializes. Today, Chris and I went into the Flathead Range to look for instabilities, and we didn't have to go far to find them. All the red flags were there, even as we were leaving the trailhead. More than a foot of new snow, rapid warming, shooting cracks, collapses, blowing snow and drifting snow, and natural avalanche activity. As we were leaving the trailhead, small road cuts had either slid naturally or cracked as we walked past them. Collapses would radiate as much as 50 feet away from us, leaving a spider web of shooting cracks across the slope. Trail breaking was deep, and we measured as much as 20 inches of new snow that fell on our widespread and fragile facet layer that formed during the long dry spell. These observations painted a clear picture to keep our slope angles below 30 degrees or stick to ridgelines. The first large avalanche path that we came upon had slid naturally and ran over a thousand vertical feet, depositing enough debris to easily bury and kill somebody. This was as bullseye data as you can ask for, and with an even heavier round of snowfall in the forecast for tonight and tomorrow, we expect avalanches like these to become even more widespread and larger in size, breaking on persistent weak layers. These could run surprisingly long distances, so you need to be aware of the terrain above you. One thing that surprised us today was the number of avalanches that ran in dense trees and in lower elevation areas that held very little snow before this storm. This isn't the type of terrain to get dragged through in an avalanche. The bottom line is that our snowpack is becoming very dangerous and we need to exercise patience. The troublesome weak layers that showed their angry teeth today will not be healing quickly.